All right, I think I'm live. Let's try this again, everyone. I'm sorry we tried something new this month and I got about three quarters of it correct. Um, we scheduled everything out for the month so we just have it all ready to go. And I got everything else right until the actual one that I went live in and I went live on the one for later this month. So um, now we're in the right spot. I am sorry, I will fix that and I'll make sure I have that updated right for later. Uh, I blame the holiday yesterday and running behind and trying to catch up. So welcome, everybody. I see everybody commenting, and I am so sorry that I'm running a little bit late. I was actually ready and sitting here and sipping my tea with minutes to spare. So I should have just double checked when I had that few spare minutes to breathe. But at this point, I need another sip or two of tea. So I'm going to start with that right now and give everyone a minute or two to catch up and find this one. Because um, I think a few people might have accidentally hopped over onto um, the other one when it went live. So I'll delete and we'll recreate that one for later so it's all set and good to go. How was everybody, if you're in the U.S., um, had a long weekend? I know it was Labor Day yesterday, which for me was a much needed, just kind of down rest day. I really didn't do anything exciting. I just kind of I had a lot of things on my to-do list and I ended up being pretty lazy, which was kind of nice. So I, I think I needed that. So welcome everyone. Oh, thank you. I, I love this mug. It's nice and white on the bottom, so it's not as easy to spill. And I love getting um, mugs from trips and stuff and, and they're kind of memorable souvenirs too. So they kind of remind me of happy trips and fun things like that. So, all right. Okay, I think we've got a pretty good group that have made their way over and found us. So since I'm running a minute or two late and we have lots to do today, I'm gonna jump right in here and run through a couple of things before we start. Um, first things first, everything I'm using is listed in the video description. I'm using um, mostly just items from our most recent release. Um, so we're doing a holiday card using festive tickets. Um, so if there's anything you have questions about, what ink color or anything, it is all linked down there. Um, behind the pink fresh name is my partner in crime, Leah. She will be catching all of the questions that I will no doubt miss once we get started and I start um, running through my list of things to get done and do. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, if I miss them, she will do a great job of catching those. Um, we also give away a $15 gift card, which is Leah's other job, is she will pick a winner towards the end of the live. And the way you enter for that is just what you all are doing already. You guys were way ahead of me um, chatting in the comments and everything. So um, leave those comments, those questions, chat with each other, kind of whatever. Um, let's see, I'm going to get rid of it. There we go. I had a little random window that was in the way there that I couldn't make go away. Um, and at the end, Leah will just randomly pick someone from the comments to win a $15 gift card. Uh, another way you can enter to win that is by sharing this video. You can grab a link from your browser. There's a little share button underneath. Um, you can grab that link there. You can share it in a Facebook message, on social media, um, in an email to a friend. Um, if you're part of a crafty group and you know it's allowed with the rules, just double check that that's all right before you do that. And then come back just like I see your Roxanne did and leave us a comment letting us know that you shared. And that way, um, and Pamela did as well. Thank you for sharing, ladies, and Sherry. Um, that way we know that you shared, so that helps make sure we get that extra entry. Um, I think that is covering pretty much everything. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera around and we're going to get started on our little card here today. All right, we are going to use the festive ticket set. It's again part of that new release, and we're going to pair it up with the large snowflakes. And I'm kind of <clears throat> going with a little bit of a vintage flair. You know what? I've remembered two other things I forgot to mention. Um, if you are new here and this is your first time, please leave us a comment and let us know. We'd love to say hi and welcome you. I'm just going to say hi now if anyone's new, because I will likely miss that as I'm crafting. Um, but everyone else, as well as Leah, um, love to welcome you. And also we really appreciate, it's not entry for a giveaway or anything else, but if you hit that thumbs up button, um, we're really, really grateful for that as well. That just kind of helps our reach. Um, 
hope some more people find us both on the live and the replay. All right, so we're gonna start off here with this lovely little stamp image and I'm gonna do something different today. Instead of stamping on white, I'm gonna stamp on craft so we get a little more of a vintage feel. And to kind of brighten it up so it doesn't end up um, kind of being dark and gloomy, I'm gonna stamp it and heat emboss it in white so we get a nice crisp outline, but then we can add color to it and kind of get a fun different look. So I have a larger piece of my cardstock. It's um, what was left over when I created my card base, um, but I'm gonna stamp this two times. I'm not gonna use, I might not even use all of the image, let alone use all of them twice, but I kind of might want two of those greenery. So I'm just gonna stamp it twice. It won't take that much longer to stamp and stencil it two times. And I'd rather just kind of do that and have those spares if I decide I want them. We're gonna start off here with the powder tool just to make sure um, this is anti-static. So it'll keep the embossing powder from sticking to anywhere I don't want it to stick. And then we're gonna stamp with just some clear embossing ink. I know gingerbread cookies came to mind too, Roxanne. I see what you said there. All right, we are definitely gonna stamp that a couple of times. You can see, I think that my misty is definitely, um, there we go. Starting to need a little extra cardstock, I think just over time and with how much I've used it. It's starting to lose a little bit or kind of um, flex a little bit there on the um, lid there. Okay, that's plenty, but I'm just for good measure gonna stamp one more time just in those little center areas. All right, and before I add my embossing powder, we're just gonna rotate this around and repeat the same thing on the other side. Then I can do embossing powder all at once. The bonus is because this is craft and watermark, um, you're gonna get a really good picture there of this stamped image on the craft. So usually this is clear and invisible and you can't even see it, but this time that's not gonna be a concern, so. Okay, so another time on here and then let's just do one more. Do it four times on both since we did that, might as well keep it consistent, right? Okay. So there we've got our double image. Just gonna move this out of the way. Grab my white embossing powder. Oh yeah, the anti-static, that's definitely not, um, not super advised there at all. It definitely works better if you have that. All right, I'm just gonna sprinkle this on. And then we'll heat set the whole thing. And then we can move on and do our ink blending. Okay, I think I've got everything covered well there. This away so I don't spill that in more than I already have to. All right, and now I'm gonna make some noise here with the heat gun and get this heat set. So Zoom will probably mute me. There is that. Okay. So we've got that. It does, it looks like um, little gingerbread cookies. I feel like I could just cut those out and use those as is and they would be super fun. But, you know, we're not gonna do that. We have to move on and use the pencils. So let's pull those out and see about doing some ink blending on here. Let's start with this first layer. And you might see, we're gonna just be pretty well right at the top of the stencil. So I'm gonna use a pretty good sheath of um, tape at the bottom. That's not gonna stay stuck down. And then I'm gonna use a little bit at the back. That way I can kind of mask off that bottom as well. 
um, and it'll help keep me from getting any inquiry I don't want, which just reminds me too, I'm also gonna need, so I'm gonna rotate around. I'm gonna need a little bit on both sides. And I am going to, just a little bit on this, I'm gonna use a little bit of fairy licious on the um, tree as well. So we're gonna just kind of do both of these at the same time. So let's make sure we can fit both of those in. I'm actually gonna angle them a little bit. So we have a little more room down here. And then let's get this carefully put in place. And I'll wiggle it around until we're liking that placement. All right, and then we're just gonna ink blend here, starting with that passion fruit. And I love how it kind of softens and you get a whole different look to the ink colors when you do either on craft or sometimes it's even fun to just do on other colors of cardstock. Um, pale uh, gray is kind of fun, pale pink, pale blue. I kind of like all of those um, different ways. And then I'm going to grab just a little bit of Berry Licious and just kind of hit around the outer edges there. All right, well, I think that's good on that. And so I'm not gonna really mess with cleaning the stencil because I'm just gonna rotate it around to the other side. And again, I probably don't need to do, I'm really more interested in the greenery, but just since I'm doing it all, I might as well um, get it all done at the same time. I'm going to start on the tree there since I already want that deeper color there anyway. And then we'll just come in down below here with passion fruit again. I love that pop of the white embossing too. Okay, and then a little more very luscious around the edges. We'll use this for a later layer on the others, but for now I wanted to get it on there. All right, let's close up these inks. Kind of trying to keep an eye on the comments, but I can tell I'm missing a lot. So I'm just gonna apologize in advance. All right, we're gonna fill this off. So there is that first reveal there. Look at how that just pops. Like I said, I don't know how else to describe that. And then we're going to do the next layer. So now we're just going to switch to, as far as I know, one color at a time. So for this, we're going to do olive. I'm going to go nice and deep and deep. So we're going to pull our green blending brush. Go ahead and just add some color. both of the trees and then the greenery. I'm kind of following our usual uh, routine of on the greenery there, making sure it's deepest colors at the base of them and then just kind of fading out a little bit as I go out. And on the tree, I'm just gonna kind of hit one side for some shading. Same on this one, a little bit more at the base. All right, let's pull that up. Ah, I love this so much. So fun. All right, on to the other side, because this is the one that actually is kind of an important layer. Again, hit that deeper color on this one side, same on the tree up there. And the same on those little greenery pieces there. Okay, and that finishes off our green layer. Let's do a quick little wipe off of the stencil. And there's another reveal there with that layer. All right, next up, 
this is a little more um, details on some places. So we're gonna kind of mix and match a little bit of different colors. So I'm gonna do a little bit, I guess, actually, you know what? I'm splitting this stencil again. So I guess we're gonna, gonna want the two here because I'm gonna do a little bit of warm buff as I'm looking at this. We'll see how, um, see how we wanna do this. All right, so let's get out the warm buff one. And I think the warm buff is mostly, I wanna do the tree trunks. And I think I wanna do the top of the ornament there with that. I'm not really worried if anything overlaps. And then rocky slope, mostly wanna hit the tires on the car. And then I think a little bit on the windows just to kind of tint those over the red. I think that's about what I want there. Yeah, that works. All right, so we'll do the same on this side. The stencil is pretty small, so nice and easy. So again, we'll hit that rocky slope, the gray for the tires and the windows. And you could mask these off. I'm not really too worried if they overlap, like I mentioned. Um, and I'm using the small blending brushes. So it's pretty easy just to get in there and get it where I want. And if I miss, it's not really going to be that noticeable. Um, okay, quick clean off of that stencil. And we're getting close to the end. There's that. Look at how fun. All right, let's do our final stencil layer now. We can go back officially for one color. Let's turn this in back to that very licious. This is going to be the main one for this. It just didn't hit the layer of the car there before. So I really wanted to get a little extra on the car. With my red blending brush again. And I'm just going to go in pretty bold and deep on this because I really want to get that pop of red. And it kind of is fun over the, the white embossing. And I want it to contrast because I already have the passion fruit on there. So, all right, let's see if that worked. Oh, yeah, we got a nice little bit of contrast there. Perfect. Okay, we'll repeat on the other side. A little too quick. In there, there we go. That wiggled around where we want it. There's almost enough ink on here, not for these areas, but I can use up a lot of the ink that was left over on the stencils for a lot of these areas. All right, clean that brush just slightly. Let's move those things out of the way, clean this stencil off. And that final peel off of our tape. I'm going to save all of those pieces of tape because I'll probably use those to hold dies down here in a minute. But look how fun those came out. All right. So we want to get these die cut. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm also going to. Um, we've got the, the set has that fun little ticket shape. I've already done some pre die cutting because I want to do um, several of these on my card, but I'm going to die cut one more um, just to show you here today. But let's go ahead and get that thing. No, it might not be. It might be too wide. We'll see. Pull a little bit of this tape off. Let's go ahead and get these die cut. And then we'll, um, you know what, before I do that too, I'm seeing. Let's see if I can kind of carefully, maybe not. That might have just smeared worse. That one's better. I had a little bit of ink on top of the white embossing of that red, so I wanted to clean it off, but it kind of smeared a little anyway, but you're not even going to know once that's die cut. So we're just going to hide that and ignore it. All right, I'm going to go die cut and then I'll be right back.
Okay. You know, I don't use craft very often either. And I'm seeing this and going, why don't I do that again? Because it really is fun. Um, this is, if anyone's wondering, uh, my favorite craft is the Nina Desert Storm. It's kind of a, a soft craft. I like that lighter tone. All right, one more thing. Be right back. Put that out of the way again. So clean that up in a minute. And I see just a couple. Actually, I think I probably only see one little Chad there that was hiding in there. So we're going to get that out of the way. Save that for later. All right. So as far as the tickets go, we're going to die cut one of those from some white. This is a great way to use your um, cardstock scraps too. And you know, Wendy, I probably could emboss afterwards. Um, I the reason I didn't is as soon as I heat set it, I feel like it softens the colors, and I wanted to keep that brightness. So I'm just gonna pull out my little die cut machine because that's perfect for these little tags and a little quicker than running it through the big machine. All right, so here's one of those little uh, tickets. That there, I'll deal with cleaning that out a little bit later. But what I want to do with these, let's pop those little um, dots out of the middle there. So we've got that white tag. The white is just a little too bright and stark. But I already have my card base. I want the craft card base. And I really wanted that pop of white on the background. So what I did is I've cut out some different colors. Um, common sense, that is the Alta New Mini Blossom die cut machine. It's just kind of a good handy one and it's really pretty too. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna trim this down so I can have a white border. It doesn't necessarily come with um, anything for that, but I'm just gonna trim a little bit off of all four sides. So I'm taking that little decorative edge off first on both ends. I know it seems sad. And then on this one, I'm just going to trim so that you see that little spot where it's dipped in. I'm just going to cut so that just that, like exactly past that is where I'm trimming off. So it's going to be about the same amount on all four sides. And then and you're going to want a paper trimmer that you can really see where you're cutting to. That's going to make that easier. But now when I line this up and put it on there, those dots are a great spot. Look at now how it has that pop of white in the two layers. So I get that red, that nice, bright, happy, bold color that I want. And I've actually already done this one time with green as well, and then one time again with the red. So I have three of these all ready to go. I just haven't glued them together yet. So I think this is going to give me that fun um, fun pop on the background while still having um, the color in the front. So like I said, if you when I had that die cut before I turned that off, I should have showed it just doesn't pop off that craft enough and it felt like it just blended in. So but again, just the plain white was a little too boring. So it kind of needed an in-between. All right, so this is my mini slimline card base. I've cut it, I went a tiny bit bigger. Our standard mini slimline is three and a quarter by six and a quarter. I went three and a half. Let me just confirm that I did that. Three and a half by six and a half. So I'm an extra quarter inch bigger on each side. Let me just show you on a standard mini slimline. So it won't fit in my normal envelopes, but I kind of want to just have that little extra space to work with. I could still trim this down and have it be this size, which wouldn't even be too bad. I just felt like that little extra room to work with was kind of nice on this card. So the beauty of handmade cards is that you can make them whatever you want. You don't have to stick to any rules. So 
Um, the colored cardstock, if that's what you're asking about, Marsha, these are both spell binders. I believe this one is called pomegranate, maybe, and then this one, maybe avocado. I can look those and double check. Um, that's just my best guess, but they are both spell binders. Um, so I do know that much at least. All right, I'm going to just glue these. Together. And again, those dots are the perfect spot to really line these up. Circle there and the dots there. And the liquid glue gives me that extra few seconds of wiggle room to get those exactly where I want them placed. That one lined up really easily. And you could use just a tape runner. You could even use foam adhesive if you wanted. But again, this is an easy way for me to use that liquid glue. Okay. Off to the side. All right, so we got these all ready to go. And we're gonna have to pick, and I know the center is where I want to stamp. And obviously heat embossed, so it shows um, that sentiment. I want to do wishing you the gifts of the season, peace, joy, and hope. So I realized I maybe should have done that before I glued those together, but we'll see if it if it ruins it and the heat messes up the glue, then I'll just recut it and do another one. That won't be the end of the world. I'll pull up my little uh, mini misty here and just pull that. In place. And we'll pop that, get that centered on there. And then, oh, I didn't get it up, and then I just messed it up and moved it. There we go. And then I pull out that powder tool again. And there we go. Find where I put my embossing ink. little more embossing ink on there than I wanted. All right, and I'm gonna be kind of careful here. Oh, that stamped beautifully. We'll do a couple though. I don't wanna to press too hard because these sentiments are really tiny and detailed on the top part there. So I wanna get a good impression, but I'm being, I mean, if you could see, I'm doing about the pressure of one finger on there. All right. And then that white heat embossing. Yes, mini slimline and slimline cart. I remember how long I put off making my first um, slimline card. And then once I did, I just for some reason, the size of it intimidated me. I thought it would be really scary, but I was surprised how much I loved it. All right, I'm going to make sure I don't have any random little bits of white ink tucked in any of these nooks and crannies since I have everything kind of together just a clean dry dry is important paintbrush and then let's heat set this real quick and see how it likes it with the glue I think we're okay um, mini slimline cards to ship, Sarah. They are easy, especially if you make them the right size. Again, I'm kind of doing mine in a tiny bit bigger, so it won't fit in the envelope. Um, but you could fit it in a bigger envelope. But I don't think any extra postage is required at all unless they're thicker. And then it would be just like any other handmade card. All right, make sure my hands are clean. And that has cooled enough. I want to get that excess little bit of the... Um, anti-static powder off of there. So my green pops out all bright and clear again, like it needs to be. And now that we have that on there, the next step, we need to die cut some of these 
and little snowflakes. This is going to be another embellishment to tuck on there. Let's grab. I'm going to do our favorite, the bubble wrap technique to get all these fun little details on here. And I'm pretty sure I can fit all of these onto one A2 piece of cardstock. Yes, I can. Tape those all down just to make sure nothing moves. And then I'm going to pop over and die cut these as well. Be right back. If you haven't tried using bubble wrap yet for your die cutting, it's so fun to listen to the bubble wrap go through. I'm, I don't know if anyone else finds um, popping bubble wrap just such a satisfying feeling. And so listening to the machine do it just kind of fits on there as well. I love it. All right, so we've got some of them that stayed in and some that came out. And I'm just going to pop those ones out here nice and easy. I'm going to worry about cleaning all the little pieces out of there later, just because you guys can probably think of a lot more fun things to do than sit and watch me do that. I have to get them out of the die cuts, but we can, we can deal with that. That's a much shorter process. Half of the effort. All right. Okay, get all those little pieces out of the way. All right, so I know I want to put these on in a row, and I haven't decided yet if I want the snowflakes to tuck. Nope, I think I want them over the top wherever we put them. I haven't quite figured out. So I think where I put them on here is I'm actually going to kind of make sure they overlap a little bit. And then whatever we pick as our fun little embellishment and kind of nestle in there, but let's see how it looks before I commit to that. Now I'm not so sure, let's see. Let's decide if we like. I think I wanna use little car for one of them so see that kind of works and I do have another one of these I'm going to play with this a little because I have one um already kind of cut in half I want to see how I like no I definitely want that tree on there Maybe we want a little candy cane tucked in behind there as well. We kind of like that. And then we did do extra of the greenery so that we could kind of tuck that wherever we sort of need to there. Which might just be, there we go. Actually, we might be able to kind of fit more of these little goodies on here than I thought. I think I'm actually going to use one of everything. And then I think those extra little ones there. Nope, we're going to reverse that. We're going to fit around that little sentiment there. Which then makes me think. A little snowflake there maybe and then I do have another half one we might not use that big one really at all because I feel like this one might just be a good one to save for something else what do we think I'm kind of liking that not sure about that hole I do have another half one let's see maybe that'll be good there a little smaller no actually I think that one does need to be 
more than just the half. It might still get trimmed off a little bit. Okay, we've got the rough idea here now. It's just a matter of kind of starting to put it all together. But I like that. I'm I'm pretty feeling pretty good about this. Actually, in this one, I might even tuck. Yes. There we go. That's what it needed to kind of hit the top of that take. All right, now, now I'm happy with this. So let's start with our little clusters off here. Now that we have our plan. And let's get these tags in here down with some fun adhesive. So I'm gonna use my, um, Simon says foam adhesive. It's called the big mama roll. And I love it because it's a little less thick because now I can pop those other elements up with foam and it's not gonna be two really huge layers of foam. So I do wanna make sure I get it all nice and stable. So we're gonna, we're gonna get all of these ready before I peel off the backing. And then we can make sure we have everything centered where we want it. Last one here. Let's see, we're doing good for them. And I haven't even picked, no idea what I want to use for embellishments yet on here, so. And this little extra, I'll just save that for later. We might use that again for everything else. Right, let's start by getting the center one. I feel like that's the best place to start. <sighs> Ruth, I'm so glad. I do love kind of traditional. It's fun to do non-traditional, but I do really love. All right, I'm going to just move these off. So I can, I'm not going to be scientific about this, but I'm just going to want to eyeball it. Everything embellished around here is going to help um, fix it to the eye if my centering was off a little bit, so. And then if I can get a hold of that lovely little backing. I'm trying to get them level. I don't know if I'm getting it perfect, but you know what? I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. Because again, with all the elements we're tucking around here, I don't think you'll even know. I think it matters more once we add our embellishments. All right. Snowflakes next. And I think I'm just going to adhere those down with liquid glue in kind of mainly that center area. And then kind of maybe some of the more. And I just realized I did actually use some of one of the, the big snowflakes. We got a little too much glue there, but that'll dab off and dry clear. So we won't worry about that too much. Hold that in place. Good thing I'm going to be able to cover that up. That was not the most beautiful thing I've ever done. <clears throat> A little less glue next time, shall we? I think kind of tucked like that. And then this one went, oops, that was a little too much glue too. Gaps it off on this one. We'll tuck this one. And I'm gonna meet there. And then put that one up on top there. Okay. And we're gonna grab back that foam adhesive and start um, adding some of that onto these. Not quite sure if I'm gonna prefer doing it without, but we'll see. I'm gonna plan that. So I'm gonna stick that one down first. Should kind of curl these up a little bit. Again, I'm not gonna stress about it too much. A little bit there and a little bit there.
And then I think we talked to this one kind of down there, right? Yeah, something like that. Maybe over there. Having second thoughts now, do I, or do I want that? I kind of think I like that up there. And this one, I think I'm going to just use a dot of liquid glue because I think that's going to tuck in there and adhere a little bit better. Okay, that side's done. Uh, Tracy, you know what? I literally just bravely eyeballed it. So there was no perfect alignment. In fact, I can almost guarantee they're not perfect. And I will probably see it as I keep looking at them, but I'm just not going to dwell on that. <sighs> I feel like that's something that's better just to not think about, and then you won't notice, right? And all of the other busy elements are going to hide any imperfections. I'm sure there are better ways to do that, but. All right, we're gonna pop that there. Off a little bit of adhesive off of that. And we need a little bit of, mostly on, let's see, let me make sure I get the right size. There we go. So I want that to overlap the ornament and I don't want the foam to get in the way there. I want it to be able to rest square on there. Good, that did it. And get that nestled on there. Where did I put this last time too? I remember that. I just popped it over. I don't remember what I had before. And where do I want to put it? There we go, maybe right there. Do you like that or do we like that better? Um, I'm not sure where I want that. I think I like it better over here. And again, we'll stick with liquid glue for this one. Try that candy cane. Oh, and then we still need before I get too far. And then we put this one up. Yep, that one under there. Put liquid glue there. Let that overlap that other ornament. It'll be pretty too. Or not ornament the other ticket. I know what I'm trying to say. Just ignore the words that come out of my mouth, right? There. All right, and we are almost there now. I think the only other thing we really need to think about adding here now is a little bit of sparkle, right? Okay, I gotta clean up a couple things here to be able to function and make this work here. But let's pull out something sparkly and decide what we wanna add on here, shall we? I didn't look to see what was in stock, so hopefully I'm not gonna grab something that I'm not supposed to use. But I'm actually, I think right on there, I think on right off the bat, those matte, gold metallic pearls, I think we're going to hit that vintage feel just right. But before I clean it, I'm going to do a quick just double check through. Mm, the champagne glitter drops would work pretty good too. We have enough red. We don't need red. Gold would work, but I like the matte better. I really think, I mean, we could almost get away with silver, but I think the gold's better. So. I really think I'm just gonna stick with those matte gold, even though I think the champagne would also look lovely. Amy, the clear would be good as well. I think I've used those a lot lately. And so I'm trying to kind of branch out. Those are a default often for me. So I'm gonna try some something new. 
some of these kind of turned over and pick a few spots that we can tuck a few of these. Some of the, there we go, the little ones. I think we want one for, I think a center there would be good. A center there. Let's try that little tree, but maybe down there. I might need an, oh, there's a little one. That's actually working pretty good there. Let's keep those tighter. I think other than that, I could probably tuck a few more, just we need a couple more of the tiny ones. Oh, good. At least I didn't uh, break any of the rules and use something not in stock. Just needed a couple more of those little bitties. That should do it. Oh, I'm trying not to dump them all over the place. Right there. There was another one there too. Okay. I do. Oops. Oh, come on. Come on to me. I don't want to go too crazy, but oh, that one up there, but maybe it's a little bit bigger. I think that works. I think that's enough. What do you think? Just enough to add a little sprinkle. Of fun, but in a little bit of a tone down to kind of fit the a little more muted tones of this card. Stick all this down, and you know what? Even though I went live in the wrong one, and we had a lot of things to work on today, I think we made it through. Um, the live. So I'm using our embellishment tool there to get all these put in place. I feel like it's just like a magical help when you're doing this. And I realized I just fat fingered that. I don't remember which way I had those. So we'll just go with whatever works. Did I have this little one there? I don't know, but now it is. Right, and then one last one there. And I think we just wrap this card up, you guys. Let me pull this up here so you can get a little bit of a closer look. And see, I also overlapped a little bit there. I might, I think I'm just gonna trim that little bit off. I didn't really think about that when I did it, but I think that'll make me happier because then I won't have to worry about it. So, all those fun little, I can't believe we actually fit all the little fun elements on there and then doubles of the leaves. So I'm glad I did that second, um, second batch there. And I love the layering on the tickets. So I hope that kind of showed a fun new way to use those a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to turn the camera back around and we'll let Leah announce today's winner. I think I see a little bit of sunshine starting to peek out of my house. So, oh, that was a weird transition. At least it worked. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed. And I sure had fun creating that card. That's, I feel like there's like this magic with lives that quite often they're my very favorite cards. And I don't know if it's just because I feel like I'm talking out loud and going through my process, like talking to someone. So, um, yeah, and I don't see the question there, but I see Leah answering Vicky um, about restocking our pinks. We've had, yeah, just like Leah said on there, we've had some issues with some reorders from the manufacturer and we don't want to sell them when they're not 
just right. So um, we've been kind of going back and forth and trying to get that right. So I know the delay is frustrating. It's frustrating for us too, because we know everyone's just waiting to pick it up. Um, but we're hoping to have that fixed soon. And the new ink colors will be coming the end of this month. We're now officially in September, so September 22nd. Oh, Amy, thank you. I I love, I know the whole spring, I guess it feels more like fall florals didn't really go with the Christmas card, but that's okay. Um, and there I see today's winner is Alicia and John Johnson. So congratulations, you are today's $15 gift card winner. All the info is in that comment for you to claim your prize. So just email Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. Her name is just L-E-A, there's no H on the end. Um, and give her two to three business days to get back to you. Um, one other thing I just wanna mention in case you weren't um, aware of it, if you're in the mood for more Christmas crafting, we do still have a registration open, I think just through the end of this week for our next uh, craft along with Leah and I. So if you wanna join in, um, we do it over a Zoom call so we can see your face if you want, you can talk to us. Um, we can we kind of chat before we start if you have any questions. And we're gonna be using the Christmas present set and we both have some fun um, plans up our sleeve with that. We do a couple giveaways. It's kind of more of our budget friendly event. Um, and the replay is, it's Thursday, it ends Thursday. Um, we have a replay link that we send out afterwards. You get a beautiful PDF right when you sign up and the link to the Zoom comes in the email as soon as you purchase it. Um, so you have everything you need to join. And that is coming up on September 16th. So um, there's still some of the bundle available as well that you can get it at a discount. So if you haven't picked up that set of product, um, that's a great opportunity to do that. But other than that, I think we, oh, Louise, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. We had so much fun. It was even more fun than we anticipated. Um, so I hope you'll join us. It's kind of like doing these, but all together. And you have all the advanced warning and the homework and everything to do so you can craft along. And we loved seeing what everyone created with their own, um, mixing things up in their own colors or using what they had in their stash. Um, this one's the Christmas presents is a little harder to substitute, but I have a feeling everyone who joins is going to have some really great ideas that Leah and I didn't even think of that happened last time. So, all right. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you again for joining us and we'll see you again very soon. Bye.